Hi, I'm Randy Efron from Sky Lattice Property Capital. I'm a former CPA, real estate private equity investor and lender, and now I leverage that experience and my relationships to help people structure competitive debt and equity capital for their real estate deals. Today's episode is part two of the single tenant net lease series. And within today's episode, I'm going to talk about how single tenant net lease properties are valued. As I discussed in my prior episode, single tenant net lease properties usually have long lease terms and tenants are responsible for maintaining the building, which means the landlord has minimal management responsibilities. Since a single tenant net lease property generates a long-term series of stable and passive cash flow for a landlord, it's kind of similar to investing in a bond. To take that step of thought further, think about how some properties are occupied by tenants that are publicly traded companies. Walgreens, for example, is a common tenant for a single tenant net lease property. And Walgreens could issue corporate bonds to raise capital. If a Walgreens property generates a long-term series of stable cash flows, What is the difference between buying a Walgreens property and a Walgreens bond? Well, with single tenant net lease properties, you're not only buying a series of cash flows, but you're also buying a hard asset, real estate. This is a good segue for us to discussing the first attribute of how single tenant net lease properties are valued. The first attribute is the credit of the tenant or lease guarantor if they are two separate parties. For the remainder of this episode, I will use the word tenant rather than guarantor, but note that if there is a separate entity guaranteeing the lease payments, that is ultimately the party that matters. So, continuing on, the stronger the credit of the tenant, the lower the cap rate will be for the property's valuation. The lower the cap rate, the lower the yield for the landlord. Note that this is similar to the way corporate bonds are valued. A corporate bond issued by a corporation with AAA investment grade credit will pay a lower yield than a non-investment grade tenant, or company, I should say. For single tenant net lease properties, if the tenant is a publicly traded company, it's easy to look up its balance sheet, income statement, and credit ratings for its debt. It's also easy to look at the company's annual reports that are filed with the SEC. For private companies, it's more difficult. This begs the question of how the strength or weakness of a tenant's credit is determined for private companies. Well, the first step is to obtain a balance sheet and income statement for the tenant. Once you have that information in hand, you could look at the tenant's liquidity net worth, sales, and net income. With that information in hand, you can also run a series of ratios to analyze the health of the tenant's business even further. As part of the credit analysis, the tenant's industry and business should also be analyzed. Is the tenant's business obsolete or is it growing? How many locations does the tenant have? Are they new to the line of business or are they a veteran in the space? The whole purpose of this analysis is to gauge the likelihood of a tenant defaulting on their lease obligations. Other ways to analyze a private company's credit is to obtain personal credit reports and scores for its owners, run background checks, and to benchmark the company against other companies in its sector where more information may be readily available. All right. So we just covered the first attribute of how single tenant net lease properties are valued. Now let's move on to the second attribute, which are the terms of the lease. Why are the terms of the lease important to the valuation of the property? Well, remember, we just said that properties are similar to bonds in the sense that they generate a long-term series of stable cash flow that's also passive. Well, what if the remaining lease term only has two years left. That would change everything. You no longer have a long-term series of stable cash flows. Similarly, what if the lease specified that the landlord is responsible for maintaining the roof of the property 
even though the tenant is responsible for maintaining everything else. What if there is a roof leak and the landlord incurs $100,000 of expenses to fix it? The passive nature of the investment just changed. It's no longer like a bond. At a high level, longer lease terms and less landlord responsibilities translate into lower cap rates and higher property values. Shorter lease terms and more landlord responsibilities translate into higher cap rates and lower property values. Since leases are lengthy agreements that contain lots of provisions, let me give you some of the key terms that will affect the property's value. First, the longer the lease term, the lower the cap rate. Second, the lower the amount of early termination provisions, the lower the cap rate. Third, the greater the frequency and year-over-year -year percentage of rent bumps, the lower the cap rate. Fourth, the lower the amount of landlord responsibilities, the lower the cap rate. Fifth, the greater the requirement for the tenant to provide sales information and other financial reports to the landlord, the lower the cap rate. Sixth, the greater the requirement for a tenant to rebuild the property after a casualty, the lower the cap rate. Seventh, the greater the requirement for a tenant to continue paying rent after a partial or full condemnation of the property, the lower the cap rate. So we just covered two of the three key attributes for valuing single tenant net lease properties. Let's move on to the third, the physical real estate. This third attribute tends to be the least important of the three when the remaining lease term exceeds 10 years. However, when the remaining lease term is less than 10 years, it becomes more important because the landlord needs to start thinking about releasing the tenant's space. Therefore, the landlord needs to consider the property's location and physical attributes and what the corresponding market rent would be for a new tenant. Additionally, tenant improvements and leasing commissions should be taken into consideration. It's common for single tenant net lease properties to be purpose built for their tenants. Therefore, significant modifications may be required for a new tenant. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. The three key attributes that are used to value single tenant net lease properties are the credit of the tenant or the guarantor if they are different, the terms of the lease, and the physical real estate. In my next episode, I'm going to talk about ground leases within the context of single tenant net lease investments. Please click like, subscribe, or follow if you enjoy these episodes, or send me an email at randy.efron at skylattice.com if you have any questions or if you'd like to talk about debtor equity capital for your real estate deals. Thanks and I'll see you next time.